both China and the U.S. see chips as really central to the technology competition between them right now. China is worried that because it relies on importing chips from Taiwan and from Korea, which are both U.S. allies, it's going to be cut off in the future from getting the chips that it needs. And right now, that's already happening to some degree. The U.S. is limiting the ability of AI firms like NVIDIA to sell their most cutting edge chips to China. And the aim of these regulations is to give U.S. firms an advantage, to make sure that U.S. companies are leaders in AI and that the U.S. gets to write the rules of how AI will play out. Today, China is the world's largest importer of chips. They spend as much money each year importing chips as they spend importing oil. There's nothing that China is more reliant on the outside world to purchase. Right now, the most advanced Chinese firm, SMIC, is about five years behind TSMC, which might not sound like a lot, but that's two and a half more laws behind TSMC, which means that for the most cutting edge applications, you really take a performance hit if you want to use a Chinese manufacturer versus a Taiwanese one. And that's the U.S. goal, to kind of throw sand in the gears of China's AI ecosystem and hope that the U.S. can race ahead as a result. The biggest change in the past couple of years has been the explosion of investment in AI. I think the release of ChatGPT in late 2022 encouraged all the big tech firms to spend tens of billions of dollars building vast AI infrastructure, which means data centers full of the most capable semiconductors. One of the key trends in the history of AI is that more advanced systems require being trained on larger volumes of data. If you want to train a system on more data, you need more computing power, which means better chips to train it. And so today, companies like OpenAI or Anthropic are spending millions and millions and soon billions of dollars training their AI systems. And most of that budget goes to buying chips, buying ultra-advanced semiconductors from companies like NVIDIA. One of the key challenges of AI is going to be to drive down the cost of deploying AI systems. To make AI really widespread across the economy, we need the cost of using it to be so cheap we don't even think about it. It's sort of like Google search today. No one thinks, what's the price of my Google search? Because it's approximately zero. Google spends a bit of money on the data centers, but it's so low you don't have to think about it. Today, AI is actually pretty expensive. A single query to ChatGPT is an appreciable amount of money. There are a lot of companies that are exploring how do you do deployment more efficiently. NVIDIA's chips, which are at the center of the AI ecosystem right now, are pretty general purpose in their capabilities. They can train many different types of models and are useful both for training and also for deployment. But if you design a chip for a specific type of model or a specific type of deployment, you can make it perfectly optimized for that use case. And so a lot of startups right now are looking at individual workloads or individual deployment opportunities and saying, we're going to design a chip that's perfectly tweaked for that use case. This is startups tackling this industry, but it's also big tech companies, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, they're all designing their own in-house chips as well because they know the specific workloads that are inside their data centers. And they've realized if they design chips specifically around those workloads, they can operate more efficiently in many cases than a general purpose AI chip like NVIDIA's can do, which I think is gonna be really important in making AI cheap enough and therefore prolific enough to make a major impact on the economy.